Well, hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Eek Acres. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys a plant that uh, us guys uh, dealt with on a regular basis while doing professional landscaping for both uh, residential and commercial accounts. And uh, this is something that we ran across all the time, and this is a plant that's very beneficial and it grows just about everywhere as long as it's out in full sun. And it seems to favor like a hard, rocky soil and ground. And it can grow along sidewalks, in the cracks of patios, it can grow in your landscaping. We used to pull this out by the bagfuls, you guys, and I wanna show you what it is up here real close. Now, as you can see, all along this bank, you see these plants that look like this. And I'm gonna pick one here. This plant is an invasive weed, but it's called horsetail. And this has a lot of benefits, health benefits. This stuff is very good for you. I'm gonna show you guys how to identify this plant because there is another plant that mimics horsetail and it's called Rustio. And uh, however, this has char characteristics that Rustio does not have. And I'm gonna show you guys the difference. As you can see along here, it looks a lot like a bamboo stalk. Okay, it's got these dark nubs right along here. And if you look at the base of the leaf, it's got these little nodes. I don't know if it's showing up, if you can see that. It's got these little nodes at the base of the leaf. Now this is a small young plant. This has just started growing this spring. Uh, the leaf itself, if I can pull one off of here, they're very, very delicate. But the leaf itself kind of looks twisted and it has these flat properties to it and it's not totally tubular. Now, Rustio will mimic horsetail, but how you can tell is that you break the stem and you want to look right down the stem. I don't know if that's showing up but the stem will be absolutely hollow because Rustio is very firm, you can't crush it. And as you go in between these darker nodes, you can, you can mash it right down flat. Whereas Rustio is very, very stiff. You won't be able to do this. And the reason why it's collapsing is because the stem itself is hollow. Okay, I found one here that's just a little bit bigger, but if you look on the stem, see those nodes, how they got those points at the top like a crown? They're called saw teeth. It's a sawtooth pattern right there, real pointy. And again, right there. That's what horsetail will have. Now, when you dry this out and you make this into a tea and you drink it, it has a lot of health properties. The state is considered this an invasive weed and they consider it a toxic weed but they do that because they don't want people to know about these plants and the, and the benefits, the health benefits to these plants. They'd rather you see a doctor than use something natural. This goes back thousands of years, you guys. The Indians have been using this, this weed right here, and they make it into a tea and they drink it. And this stuff is great for all kinds of things, and I'm gonna give you the list right now. Um, this is not the full list, but I wrote down just some of the things that this plant is good for, and I wrote them down because I can't remember everything because my memory is shot. But this plant right here heals ulcers and wounds, treats tuberculosis, fights kidney problems, preserves your skin, your nails, your hair, and your teeth. And it also treats urinary tract infection. And it also promotes healthy bone tissue, fights cystitis and nephritis, and prevents osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, and rheumatoid arthritis. This stuff right here is fantastic for hair, you guys. So just remember, horsetail is one of the best things for your skin and for your hair. If you want glossy, shiny, healthy hair and youthful looking skin, make this into a tea and it will give you those properties. But the fact that it fights os osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, and rheumatoid arthritis, a lot of people all throughout the world suffer with that. And you make this into a tea and you drink it and uh, it will take care of that. So just remember to identify this plant. You'll see how there's like little strands of green, like little striped green on the leaf itself. And the leaf will be twisted 
and it will have flat flat parts on it. See there? That's what the leaf is going to look like. Just like that, how it looks twisted and parts of it are flat. It's not totally round. And again, you want to look for the sawtooth crown looking uh, top around the nodes of the stem. And also the stem will collapse in between these nodes because the stem is totally hollow. I wish I had loppers to cut this with on me. But see, there's a hollow stem. You can see right down the center. This is true horsetail. Rustio will be totally solid stem and it won't have the crown features and the leaf won't look like this. And you'll also see nodes at the base of the leaf, right where it meets the stem. See those little nodes that are lighter green than the rest of the leaf right here? These little nodes, that's what you want to look for. So a hollow stem, flat twisted leaf, and nodes at the stem, and then the crown sawtooth on the stem itself. And this stuff is growing everywhere on this bank. There is literally thousands and thousands of these things. This is what we used to pick all the time landscaping. The customers didn't like this stuff. They're like, what is this green bushy looking thing coming up in my, my mulch and in my landscaping and around my sidewalks and all over my patio? It's horsetail. This is one of the most beneficial plants that you could dry out and make a tea from and drink it. And it solves all kinds of health issues, all kinds. And this stuff just grows in the wild and the state wants to get rid of it. You can also buy this on Amazon. If you, if you don't know or trust to go out and identify this and you don't know where to look for it or where to find it and you've never seen this before, you can buy a whole bag of this stuff on Amazon for under $12 for a bag. And I'll show you a picture of it here. And um, make a tea out of it. It already comes dried. Make a tea out of it. Drink it. And you'll have all kinds of benefits from drinking horsetail tea. So... Now, in the rest of this video, you guys, I'm going to show you a plant that is the exact opposite. It's poisonous and how to deal with it and how to get rid of it and what to do and what not to do. Okay, you guys, we're going to take another closer look here at poison ivy. Now, there's a lot of people out there that know how to identify poison ivy. They know what it looks like. They know what it can do. But for those that aren't quite as familiar with it, I'm going to show you what poison ivy looks like because this is a very old growth of poison ivy and I want to get this stuff off this tree because it's right here next to the driveway and I don't want anybody getting into it but I'm going to show you what poison ivy looks like and the reason why they call it ivy is because it's it's a climber it's a it's a vine so it's a form of ivy that is poisonous and a lot of people break out badly some people have severe reactions to this plant some people have mild reactions to this plant I have no reaction to this plant. So what I'm about to show you, I do not recommend you attempt without being fully protected, wearing gloves, um, protecting your face, making sure the plant doesn't fall back on you and come into contact with any portion of your body or your clothes. Because if it comes into contact with your clothes, you need to take them off and wash them immediately because uh, the oils of this plant are uh, pretty, pretty nasty stuff. So let me show you here. Poison ivy always grows uh, with three leaves, and this is what it looks like. Um, as it grows out, it can become a little more green, but uh, for the most part, it's got that reddish uh, look on the leaf, and you can see the vein pattern there on the leaf itself. So you'll have one that's out at the end of the stem, and then one to the either side of it onto the back. So you've got these ones here that will grow to the back of it. And um, what, what makes poison ivy uh, very poisonous and why people have such a bad reaction to it, if you look that the leaves are very, very shiny, they look almost like they're waxy. This is because the plant has microscopic pores and it secretes a toxic oil. So this oil that uh, secretes onto the plant uh, and then something rubs against it and that's what gets on your skin. And then if you go back on the stem, you'll see it becomes a little more woody. So let me break a piece off here. Right there. It becomes a little more woody down here at the base. If this will focus. Maybe it won't focus. See, it becomes a little more woody. And, uh, but that's how the leaves look. It's always in a pattern of three. And then as it goes down, it's just more, you know, like a regular twig. But if you look at the vine itself right here 
it gets this hairy looking stuff on it. This is the roots here that attach to the tree. And this is an old vine because this thing is really, really thick. So what I'm gonna do, and I do not recommend again, you guys, that you do this unless you're fully protected, but uh, poison ivy doesn't really affect me all that much. Even if you can't get the root off of the tree all the way, you wanna, you wanna break it so it's separated because now the plant can't grow. And one thing you do not want to do with poison ivy, see the oils on the blade right there? See the oil? That's what gets on your skin and that's what can give you a severe reaction. What you want to do is you want to just grab it right here and just pull it off like that. Take the whole thing off. You never ever want to burn poison ivy or, or poison oak because what happens is as it burns, the toxins get into the smoke. You can breathe it in and get it into the mucous membranes of your eyes and then you're gonna have one hell of a trip at the emergency room. You do not wanna burn this stuff whatsoever. Never throw any toxic plant into a fire. That's the worst thing you can do. See, I'm just cutting it and pulling it off the tree. And these vines have been here a long time. Someone's allowed this to grow. And let me tell you what, they are tough. Very, very tough. Get this big one right here. It's growing so much into the tree, it's almost like it's not a vine anymore. find another area to get into it. Just like that. And break this off. Once it's separated from the roots, it can no longer grow. Right there, got a nice separation. Now everything up there will die and it'll be easier to pull it off the tree. And then I'll have to get it out at the root base because it'll just grow back. It'll, it'll start up a new vine. So I got to go around this tree and dig it out at the base. But this thing's been allowed to grow here for a long time because it goes way, way up this locust. So, uh, yeah, I'll get it out of here and kill it. This tree's dying anyway. Eventually it's gonna have to be all cut down. But that's how you identify poison ivy right there. These long vines that have, that have these uh, gnarly roots on them like that. See there? It's got all that, it almost looks like hair. It just looks like brown hair wrapped around the vine. And, um, that's how you can tell poison ivy. So that's the best way to get rid of it. Like I said, if you are um, at risk of this bothering you and giving you a bad reaction and causing blisters that can be painful and itchy and just very irritative, uh, wear gloves, long sleeve shirt or jacket and protect yourself and um, discard of it using like a pitchfork after you get a pile of it, but do not burn this stuff, never burn it. Discard of it somewhere um, and far enough away to where it's not going to grow somewhere you don't want it to grow um, because this stuff is very evasive and you'll once you get it on your property if you don't deal with it it will start taking over and growing all over the place and eventually it'll get ahead of you so you want to get rid of it while you can so that's how you do with poison ivy and that's how you identify it and there's several trees around here that it's growing on and some of it's really old and well established. Some of the vines are that big around the size of a quarter. So uh, 
best thing to do is just chop through it, pull off what you can. After it dies back, it's easier to remove. And then, um, you know, because it doesn't have the ability to hang on quite as much. And uh, just watch the vines don't fall on your head or brush against your face or anything like that if you're susceptible to it. Just be very careful, be fully protected, and uh, remove it as safe as possible. Or if you don't want to remove it yourself, get someone like myself that isn't affected by it and have them do it for you. So, so I hope that helps you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in another episode of EK Acres. Have a good day. Bye-bye.